I believe in miracles because I believe in God. You are responsible before God for today. God wants to show His power and His greatness in our lives. And a big welcome to everyone today watching. So glad you can join us for the Ernest Angley Hour. Friend, we have a great message for you. Good gospel music and singing. And today, Reverend Steve Millar will be preaching on the dangers of drifting spiritually. Yes, child of God, you can drift from the Lord. You must be careful. This is a message of warning. I know it will bless you. But first, we have Angels Grace Cathedral Choir, Near My God to Thee.
The title of my message is The Dangers of Drifting Spiritually. Now, about 20 years ago, our ministry published a Holy Ghost magazine with a message in it, written by Reverend Ernest Angley, and the title of that message was Dangers of Drifting. Now, the Lord, I really felt the need for me to bring this message, you know, this topic forth. You know, naturally, Reverend's sermon is going to be different from my sermon, but the topic is the same. And I believe the message in that will be the same also. You know, there's a lot of people who are drifting, and they don't even realize that they're drifting. You know, they're so far off course that they don't even know it. If you have drifted spiritually away from the Lord, you won't be ready when the rapture takes place. And you'll be left behind. There are five key signs that I want to bring to you about drifting from the Lord. Number one is you let up on your praying. You basically stop talking to God that much. Number two is you close your mind to Bible fasting. All of, a self, all of a sudden, self rises up, and you just don't ever feel like the need to fast. Number three is you skip over your Bible study. You don't dive deep into the Word. You don't have that real foundation to build your house on. Number four is you think nothing about skipping church. For whatever reason, people have no problem skipping church for the cares of life. And number five is you lost your burden for lost souls. All of these signs point to one thing, and that is your lack of dedication to the Lord. In other words, you lost your first love. Remember how you were when you first got saved? You had that go ye attitude to do whatever it takes. You were willing to do anything for the Lord at that time. You were willing to spend and be spent at any cost for the Lord. You're willing to lay down your life for the sake of the gospel. If you don't have that same zeal that you once did, then you're drifting. 
and you may not even realize it. You may still be active in church, still at your post of duty, but you're no longer doing it for God. You're doing it to be seen by man and the praise of men. In Galatians chapter 1, verse 10, it says, For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. That is a profound statement that Paul wrote. That if you're not, that if you're a pleaser of men, then you're not a servant of Christ. So many people are drifting today. Christians are being, becoming lukewarm because they are focused on pleasing men rather than God. And this is why social media has become so dangerous to so many. People get caught up in social media, so they're focused on how many likes they get. And that starts to alter their behavior, to please their social audience that they are trying to get. And they forget about pleasing God all of a sudden. Jesus dealt with this behavior during his ministry here on earth. There are many people, many that believed in Jesus at that time, but they didn't confess it because they believed in him, but they didn't want to tell others because they wanted to please men. In John chapter 12, verse 42 and 43, nevertheless, among the chief rulers, also many believed on him, meaning Jesus. But because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. For they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. How sad that the chief rulers... Love the praises of men more than the praises of God. But when you drift away from God, you will be in the same condition. You will love the praises of men more than the praises of God. Now, don't get me wrong. We use social media to spread the gospel. And it's a great tool when used for good but you must be careful because the devil is using it to get many of you to drift away from God. How do you know if the devil has seduced you and caused you to drift away through social media? Well, do you spend more time on social media? than you do in the Word of God? You spend more time on social media than talking to God? Nothing should take your place of your daily prayers and your Bible study. When you don't talk to the Lord daily and throughout the day, then you're going to drift you can't just ignore God. There's no way around it. Christians who have a firm foundation in the Lord will be careful not to drift in this final hour. So how strong is your foundation with the Lord? Do you think you have a pretty strong foundation? Is there any cracks in your foundation? The more quality time you spend with the Lord, the stronger your foundation is going to be. 
If attending church on the weekend is only the time that you spend with the Lord, then you're going to come up lacking. The church can only do so much as a whole. Our time is limited with each one of you. You have to put in your time with God. The sermons that come forth from this pulpit can help you understand the Word of God, but you still have to put your time in with God. Talk to Him. Pray. Read your Bible. You can't have the mindset, well, I went to church today, so I'm good the rest of the week. The purposes of church is simple. It's for God's people to come together to worship Him and also to evangelize the world by spreading the knowledge and truth of God's Word. God wants His people to gather together to worship Him. And in the book of Hebrews, it states that we should not forsake the assembling of ourselves together so we can encourage others in the faith. Parents, how much of God is in your home? Are you depending on the Sunday school teachers to teach your children about the Word of God and that's it? We have a great Sunday school department and they strive to teach each one of your children the ways of the Lord, but they only have them a few hours in each service. What about the rest of the week? How many children have drifted from the shore, I mean, excuse, from the shore because they weren't given additional guidance by their parents? The Bible says in Proverbs 22, 6, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. The key word in this scripture is train. It's not a one and done deal. If you want to get a positive result, you must be consistent in your training. No matter what it is. Have you ever tried to train your pet? You have to be consistent. It's very repetitive. Sometimes it takes time and patience, but you can get positive results if you put your time in. If you're not consistent in your training, then you know that your pet will not see that much progress. And so it is with your children. If you're not willing to put the time in to train them in the ways of the Lord, then you, they will eventually drift away and depart from the truth. You can't rely on just a few hours a week to be able to help your children throughout the rest of the course of the week. No. You have to do your part. Help your children. Have a godly home. It's very important that you equip your children with the knowledge of the truth so that they can fight the enemy when he comes against them. You have to realize your children are going to be out in the world they're not always going to be at church and at home. The sad thing is, our schools are now in introducing our children to gender ideology. That would never have taken place years ago, but now it is happening. And if you're not careful and you're you are adrift, all of a sudden you may wake up one day and realize that your children 
have been taken over by this ideology. And it will be too late to rescue them. Parents, know what your children are doing and what they're involved in. And don't let them just have free reign of the internet. You have to realize they're just little. Their minds are not trained and developed enough for the truth of God's word to be able to discern good and evil. And you have to realize there's a lot of evil on the internet. Remember, the devil will disguise things. And a lot of things can just pop up out of nowhere. And they have to realize that they need to get away from that. So you can't put all that on your child at such a young age. They're going to learn the Lord in this Jesus ministry. But you have to be careful. You don't want to just send them out there because that internet, I'm going to tell you right now, there's a lot of wolves in sheep's clothing. If you want your child to be safe, you have to know what they're doing. Or they'll fall prey to the devil. This seems like the worst time in history to raise children because there's so many distractions that the world offers and it's all at their fingertips. It's all readily available. All they need to do is click and boom, it's there. But the same thing goes for adults. You have to be careful what you spend your time on throughout the day. You may think what you're engaged in is harmless. But if it's consuming all your time and taking time away from the Lord, then it's not harmless. Friend, keep watching. We'll have the conclusion of the message later in the program. But right now, I would like to take this opportunity to thank all of you supporters out there. You stand by this Jesus ministry with your prayers, your financial support. We appreciate it. It's greatly needed, and you're helping us to shine the light of truth to a dark, dark world of sin. And friend, keep standing by, and as you do, God will bless you spiritually, physically, and financially. He will open up heaven's windows upon your life as he promised he would and pour out blessings in abundance. And those of you who are watching, maybe you're thinking about becoming a partner with us. I encourage you to do so. You know, you can send in your support through mail or you can always go to our website, ernestangely.org, and there you can donate online. It's safe, it's secure, and what a blessing it is. And if you decide to become a monthly supporter, you'll get a monthly mailing. And the June mailing is entitled 70 Years Strong. Yes, this month marks the 70th year anniversary of this Jesus ministry as we continue to take the gospel to the world. And also, when you sponsor each month, you'll get a new giant little book of the month. And the June giant little book is entitled, Nothing is Too Hard for God. What a message of faith and encouragement. So when you send in your support for the month of June, be sure to request offer P400. And friend, don't forget, the next time you're on our website, read the latest edition of The Power of the Holy Ghost magazine. The title is Getting Ready for Miracles. Yes, sometimes you need to prepare to receive your miracle from the Lord. So the message will bless you in a great way. Also, you read testimonies from other people here in the United States and nations around the world of how God is moving for them, blessing them, giving them miracles through this Jesus ministry. Read it for free. ErnestAngely.org. Now we have more good music and singing for you. It's Jeremiah and Ali Eisenbraun with a beautiful song, Trust and Obey. the light of his word what a glory he shines 
sheds on our way Let us do his good will He abides with us still And with all who will trust and obey Trust and obey For there's no other way To be happy in Jesus But to trust and obey
for through the blood The precious blood I've been set free Heaven's joy and peace and love inside Thank you Lord for the Jesus victory Peter, when he fell asleep in jail Give me that joy like Jairus When his daughter was made well Give me that faith of the fearless Like the mighty saints of old Bear the fruits of the Spirit And they'll keep you heaven strong Give me more meekness So I'll let the ego go Give me more temperance So your grace can always flow Give me more goodness so the lost can see I've changed It's only through the fruits The Holy Spirit gave Lord, give me that peace like Peter When he fell asleep in jail Give me that joy like Jairus When his daughter was made well Give me that faith of the fearless Like the mighty saints of old Bear the fruits of the Spirit And they'll keep you heaven strong Jesus' light is there. Give me more gentleness as your presence fills a room. I wanna be like you and carry all nine through. Lord, give me that peace like Peter when he fell asleep in jail. Give me that joy like Jairus when his daughter was made well. Give me that faith of the fearless like the mighty saints of old. Bear the fruits of the Spirit and they'll keep you heaven strong. Give me that. Old time religion, and it's good old enough time for me. Give me that old time religion, and it's good enough for me. Makes me shout when I get happy. Makes me shout when I get happy. Makes me shout when I get happy, and it's good enough for me. Lord, give me that peace like Peter when he fell asleep in jail. Give me that joy like Jairus when his daughter was made well. Give me that. Faith of the fearless like the mighty saints of old Bear the fruits of the Spirit and they'll keep you heaven strong Bear the nine fruits of the Spirit and they'll keep you heaven strong
it's gonna be nice, Lord, it's gonna be nice when I get to heaven. It's gonna be nice. I've kept the good faith, Lord, I fought the good fight. Now I'm headed to that place where there is no night. It's gonna be nice, Lord, I'm a coming home. be nice when we reach our heavenly home. Now taking you back to Grace Cathedral for the conclusion of the message today. How's your foundation? Is it built on solid rock? Jesus said in Luke chapter 6 verses 46 through 49, and, and why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built an house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose and the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built an house upon the earth against which the stream beat vehemently and immediately it fell. And the ruin of that house was great. You can come to the church every weekend and hear what comes forth from this pulpit but if you don't apply it to your life, then your foundation is not built upon a rock. If you want to build your foundation upon the rock, then you have to dig deep. And that takes time, and that takes energy, and that takes effort. When you relax your hold on the Lord, no, you, and you no longer feel the need to dig deep, then the devil will give you that false sense of security. And all of a sudden, you slowly start drifting away from the Lord. Your foundation, when your foundation is not built upon a rock, you will basically be risking your soul. And I don't think people realize that. You have to put a great value on your soul. Because God puts a great value on your soul. You can't wait until the storm comes before you look up. 
and see that you drifted too far from shore? People say that they have a good relationship with God, but they really don't put the time in with him. And it shows up on them. And they get washed away with the storms of life. If the Lord doesn't come first in your life, you won't last when the trials and tribulations come your way. When the pandemic hit, we were not able to gather together in the house of the Lord, but God made a way for us to stay connected through our live streams. That was a great blessing. God moved and worked that all out for us. But the devil used that opportunity to spray some people, some of God's people, with that careless spirit. And they no longer feel the need to be present in these services. If you had the freedom to go to work, go shopping, go out to eat, even go on vacation, then why aren't you coming to the house of the Lord to worship? It's because you are drifting. And you don't even realize it. That's the sad thing. The Lord honors every sacrifice that each one of us make. But the sad thing is, for one reason or another, people don't have enough energy to come to the house of God, but they can go shopping, they can go on vacation, they can go out to eat with their friends and family, but they can't make it to God's house. They can make it to their house. They can make it to their friend's house. They can make it to their aunt's house, their uncle's house, their mom's house, their dad's house, but they can't make it to God's house. In Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. When you slowly drift away from the Lord, your mind will slowly become conformed to the world. Again, drifting is a slow process. People don't even realize that they're drifting away from God. How long did it take before Demas started to drift? Eventually his mind became conformed to the world and he left the faith. Now, the Bible doesn't tell us that he ever made it back to the Lord. No doubt, I'm sure he's in hell right now, wishing that he would never have drifted away from God. Paul was so disappointed in Demas. He took it personally when he said in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 10, For Demas hath forsaken me having loved this present world. When you drift away from the Lord, your love will change from the things of the Lord to the things of the world. It was very easy for Demas to forsake Paul. Once he embraced the world, because Paul was not of the world. When you begin to drift, you will seek companionship with worldly people. You won't feel the need to be around God's people. The devil loves to whisper in your ear, 
You can hang around with those worldly people. You're not doing anything wrong. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? Hanging around unbelievers will cause you to drift farther and farther away from the Lord. This is a dangerous hour. Are you adrift right now? Examine your life. Look up and see. Where are you spiritually with the Lord? It'll be too late when the rapture takes place and you find yourself left behind because you drifted too far away from the Lord and you grieved the Holy Spirit right out of your life. When is the last time the Holy Spirit actually spoke through you? Receiving the Holy Spirit isn't just about having Him to make the rapture. You must have Him so He can teach you and guide you into all things pertaining of the Lord. In John chapter 14, verse 26, it says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. If you're finding it harder and harder to remember God's word, that could be a red flag that you're not putting the time in and yielding over to the Holy Spirit to bring God's word to remembrance. It's the Holy Ghost that will teach you all things and bring them to your remembrance, and that is in the Word of God. You can't afford to let God's promises or the deepness of His Word slip your mind in this hour. The next passage of Scripture is a great warning of the dangers of drifting. In Hebrews chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, Therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and every disobedience receive a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord, and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. God also, bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders and with divers miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. When you neglect anything that is of the Lord, that is a warning sign that you're drifting. Don't let the devil deceive you in this final hour. Look up, look up and see where you are at with the Lord. Get back to shore. If you have drifted away from your first love, it's time to come back. Friend, I'd like to give you this opportunity right now to receive Jesus Christ in your heart. Receive him today and let him change your life forever. Say, oh God, save my soul. Forgive me for my sins. But I have come home to serve you the rest of my life. And I believe that the blood of Jesus washes away all of my sins. Come into my heart, Jesus. Come on in, Jesus. Amen. Friend, if you meant that prayer, you have Jesus Christ in your heart. Live for him daily. Tell others about Jesus.
Let the Lord bless you in a great way by telling others about Jesus. It's wonderful to be a witness in this final hour because souls are at stake. And some of them could be your loved ones. So let others know about Jesus and how Jesus Christ changed your life today. Now, those of you that maybe have put your request in, in the comment section, and you need prayer for whatever your need may be. The Bible says in Mark's gospel, the 16th chapter, that believers will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. I am a believer. Reverend Chris Mockamer is a believer. There's many believers here in our sanctuary. So let the Lord move for you right now to heal you of any sickness or disease that may be in your body. I'd like to encourage you to put your hand against my hand on the screen. This is just, this, excuse me, this is just a point of contact so you can receive all that you can from the Lord to release your faith. Lord, Heavenly Father, just move in a great, mighty way in the blood name of Jesus Christ, I pray. We curse every sickness, every disease in their body. Heal them in the holy blood name of Jesus. Take all that sickness out of their body. Anoint them with a healing anointing. Let them receive all that you have for them. Break their bondage and set them free in the blood name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Heal in the holy blood name of Jesus. Heal in the holy blood name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Friend, look for every sign of improvement and always give God the praise, the honor, and the glory for everything that he's doing in your life. And now at this time, those of you that are in this sanctuary, and if you need prayer, I'd like to encourage you to go to my left and your right, and I'll be over there in just a little bit to minister to you. And the rest of you, I want to encourage you to come up front to get more power from on high. Maybe you just accepted Jesus Christ in your heart, and now you want to be spirit-filled. Well, I'd like to encourage you to come up front to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Let the Holy Spirit move for you in a great and mighty way. Let him come on in, take over your tongue, and speak in a heavenly language. So at this time, I'm going to call down a great anointing as everybody yields on over, that that power gets stronger in your body, and just yield on over to the Holy Spirit and give him the freedom and liberty to speak through you. Lord, Heavenly Father, I call down this great anointing upon the people. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. And just start praising them, friend. Glorify in Jesus. Glorify in the King. Lifting up those praises. Yes. Just let them bless you. Just yielding on over. Just you in Jesus. Let that power get stronger in your body. In the blood name of Jesus. Friend, I hope you were blessed by the message today. And those of you who prayed along with Reverend Steve Millar, I'm believing and expecting God to move for you. And when he does, when he supplies that need, when he breaks that bondage, gives you that miracle healing, let us know about it. You can send us your testimony by way of email to testimonies at ernestangely.org. And friend, when you have the opportunity, I'd like to invite you to pay us a visit at Grace Cathedral. You may live out of town or in another state. Well, when you're in the area, or if you decide to make plans, come and be with us. We have services every weekend, Friday night, two services on Sunday. We always welcome visitors to worship the Lord with us. What a blessed time in the Lord we have. And if you're in need of prayer, come and expect God to move for you as the minister will be there at the end of the service to minister unto you. However, if you're not able to be in our services in person, you can still join the service right from your home. You can join us by way of the live stream. You know, you can become a subscriber to our YouTube channel at Ernest Angley Ministries. And when you do, you will be notified ahead of time when a service is about to start. That way you can get online and join us for service as it's going on. And we pray for people who join by way of the live stream. People gather with us from other states and other nations during our service and what a time in the Lord it is. You can also join the service by way of our Facebook page as well.
And when you have the opportunity, check out all of our social media content, especially on our Instagram page. We're adding new spiritual content all of the time. It's just good food for your soul to bless you, to uplift you. It's just a great, great thing to have. And friend, remember our July 4th weekend services. They run from July 5th through the 7th. That's a Friday night through a Sunday night. Four great services, Friday night, Saturday evening, two services on Sunday. Oh, what a blessed time in the Lord. Plenty of good music and singing the word of God going forth and preaching. Those who are in need will receive prayer. Friend, I hope you enjoyed the program today. We look forward to seeing you next week. You are special to God.